This is wildlife biologist Eric Orff with my New Hampshire Fish and Wildlife YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Appreciate that. Well, this is the first week of April. <clears throat> and what is happening here in central New Hampshire in April? Well, we had some April showers. I see over the last day and a half we had 0.9 inches of rain. So I've had a rain gauge for most of my 41 years I've lived here and just kind of keep track of how much rain I get. So, uh, so you know, I pay attention. I pay attention to the rain, the level of the river down back. And this time of year, one of my most enjoyable things to do is to put on my parabolic listening device and have a listen. Let's see what's out here now. As I've grown older, my hearing is not as what it was, but with my listening device, and I've had this thing for at least 30 years, I would say. So I come out here and I see who's up, what's going on, and I hear red-winged blackbirds. Uh, blue jays, I think, and uh, Right here. Normally, maybe in another few days, when we get some warm weather, next couple days I'll begin to hear peepers and wood frogs here. They haven't started yet at my house. Elsewhere in town I think they have. Just haven't started here. So I come out here several times a day to have a listen. See what's going on in, in the neighborhood. Awesome device. I don't know. I bet it doesn't cost $100. Probably... Far less than that. I don't know. I bought it 30 years ago and it probably cost me $20. But this listening device has been such a wonderful thing to own and more so as I age and my hearing is not as good as it used to be. It opens up a whole new sense of what's out there when you can hear for yards and yards away or hundreds of yards away or a half a mile away. So it really opens up your world when you can listen to things that are happening in the distance. Well, here's what I wanted to point out. What else is happening? Ho oh, oh, ho, last night, one of my neighbors stopped by and did that. Yep, we had one of our bears swung by last night. And you can see my, it's my bird feeder. You know, I, I have, as I've said, for a number of years, I no longer have any black oil seed out. I have taken those down weeks ago. But I still put out some crack corn and a little bit of whole kernel corn for my blue jays, which I love to see. And I have had still, just a couple of minutes ago, there was a junco out there. This is late in the season for juncos. They haven't headed north yet for some reason. I still got numbers of juncos. Yesterday I had a song sparrow out here. Uh, nut hatches, some woodpeckers. I had more woodpeckers before. You know why the fence is down. I had hanging under that. Uh, a wire basket with some suet in it <clears throat> and it was maybe a handful of suet that hadn't the birds hadn't taken while I was gone this winter in Florida and usually by now I kind of you know, open up the wire cage and I give the the suet a toss over the banking there so that the uh, skunk or raccoon can lug them off and I had another one hanging right here which had still just a few scraps of suet in it but as you can see there it is down there so Mr. Bear came last night, or Mrs. Bear, and helped himself to the few scraps of suet that I had in my two feeders that I hadn't taken out yet. Well, my fault. Anyways, well, they were hungry. I would have preferred that they knock, not knock my fence down, but it looks like <laughs> whoever it was, whoever he was or she was, kind of got tangled in there. Again, my hearing is not what it was uh, 30 years ago. I didn't hear this commotion. And whoop, there's the Phoebe, that my Phoebe return. There actually is a camp down back. It was actually built in the early 1950s and has been very well maintained uh, by a family that now lives in Connecticut by the uh, daughter and her husband. They come up for a few days, two or three times a summer. Great neighbors to have and they enjoy the river as we always have. And have had a good relationship with them, but they don't come up very often, and 
Uh, you know, it's <laughs> my camp in Maine or camps in Maine are so special, and this is truly one of their prized possessions, and I'm glad that they still, after 60, 70 years, are still using that camp down there once in a while. So good neighbors to have, but <clears throat> Phoebe has been nesting for more than a decade now under the eaves of that camp, and yesterday the Phoebes showed up. So our Eastern Phoebes are back. Our bears are back in town. Uh, the field across from my house is beginning to green up. Another uh, one, probably probably about a month out if things turned warmer and dry here, that the local farmer will be planting that cornfield. You can no longer see down back because the trees are grown up. Never had floods of spring. The, the Suncook River, which is right here. <coughs> oh, there's my deer skull. Let me show you that. There's my main deer right there from last fall. And see it's a little bit white there. There's still some brain matter in there. I was hoping the bugs would kind of take care of. Last several days, hmm, my local squirrels have been chewing on my antler. Well, I guess it will give it a little more character, so not too worried about it. So there's last year's main deer. And there's the river. Again, it, it never did flood this year, the spring. It was kind of just, just flowing along. Very, very mellow spring we've had here. Kind of cold the last week or so, cold and damp. So uh, things are not warming up like they certainly could be by now. <coughs> but uh, here we are, birds are back. I've had a uh, white breasted nuthatch up on my, uh, the roof of my, uh, the, the birdhouse that's on the top of my deck, the garage last few days and uh, I don't know it might be nesting up there I think so anyway so robins are calling much of the day much of the time in the early morning particularly so yes spring is here it's going to warm up crocus is in bloom a couple of daffodils uh, many lawns are greening up not mine so much yet my snow pile I gotta go out after I finish this and check it yesterday I had just a oh a half a bushel of snow left on my front lawn. I'm thinking today it's gone. I gotta go out there and check it. And mo if I, according to my di diary, most years the snow pile on my front lawn where it, it gets plowed up usually goes around April 15th. So if it's gone today, that means my snow has left 10 days earlier than many other years. So we seem to be in somewhat of an early spring. In fact, March, the temperatures in March ran above average. Uh, not not the last few days, but uh, so it's apparently been a fairly warm spring and an early spring here in New Hampshire and uh, things are warming up and speeding up. So make sure you get outside, get away from that bad news of the pandemic on TV, get outside and have a listen, take a walk. I think I'm a couple of days away from smelling spring. You know, I love the smell, that earth that warms up in the afternoon sun. That, to me, is the first smell of spring. Uh, <laughs> so wonderful. So I'm looking forward to having a whiff of spring any day now. All right. Don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you.